Okay. All right. Oh my gosh, we are rock and rolling. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, I saw your background, you know, being in music videos, and I interviewed your brother, Damien, for Lollapalooza many years ago. <laughs> tiny, tiny, small little world. Absolutely. Um, and uh, do you recommend directors get started in music videos? What was advantages for that? Sure. I mean, I think that it's wonderful to be able to use music and choreography as one of your tools and telling stories and making pictures because everybody loves music and everybody loves movement, whether they're a trained dancer or choreographer or not. So I think it's a really strong storytelling device. Um, and just having a sense of rhythm, even in the way people talk, the way people come and go from a scene, um, it's it's very helpful. I also think just the stamina of shooting music videos prepares you because if you can shoot videos, you can shoot music videos, you can you can shoot anything. So um, yeah, I think there's no better film school than music videos for sure. Excellent. How'd you get involved with this project in particular? I just fell in love with the script. I, I did not know about the book until I dove into it after reading the script. I started stalking Audrey, the writer, who is, of course, the real life Jane, um, because I just loved the story so much. And I loved their friendship. And I love the potential to tell this story in a kind of like playful, a little bit irreverent way, but also just to do something really sincere. I've done, you know, I've done a lot of music stuff. I've done a lot of dance stuff and comedy. And there was a certain sort of vulnerability and just um, go put your go out on a limb with your heart a little bit to this story that I was really, um, I felt that was a real good challenge for me. So yeah, I just, I chased it down. I begged the producers in the studio to let me, to let me try to make it. Right. Um, did uh, you have any reservations about someone as beautiful as Yara playing like a plain Jane? <laughs> I mean, yes and no. I knew that we would get the question and I knew that we would get people who say no one who looks like that has any trouble getting guys or being, you know, sociable. But I also know that that's wrong. Like people will say that. And I'm sure some people think that. But I also know firsthand some very, very beautiful people who are incredibly socially anxious, shy, introverted, nervous, insecure, um, or even just confused about where to go in life, which can really give give you a head game. So I did not, I, I, I was not really deterred by that. I knew that people, there would be some people who didn't get it. That's up to them. Um, but you know, to me, you can be drop dead gorgeous and absolutely a fashion icon in your other life off, you know, out of this movie, but you can be Jane. You can have all kinds of anxieties and confusions about life and, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Give me one funny story about Bette Midler. Um, Bette Midler, let's see. Oh God, I just love her so much. Um, I want, I'll tell you a story. We had to cut this scene for pacing and timing. And it makes me so sad because I love this scene so much. She, the boss, Benita, one of the sort of running jokes is that she's always getting stuff, you know, sent up because she's a big agent, right? Like champagne bottles and gift baskets and whatever. So at some point someone sends up a rowing machine and she's on there like yelling at Corinne while she's rowing on this rowing machine. And I believe it was originally scripted that it wasn't, she wasn't going to have to get on the rowing machine. You're just going to see the rowing machine, like get dragged in behind her and stuff. Damn if she didn't get on it. And she was like, oh no, I'll get on the rowing machine. And she's in these like stiletto heels, tight pants, full makeup. And she's just rowing. And we did like take after take and we're at different angles and whatever. And there's this one angle and I just love it so much. I'm so sad that we had to cut this scene for time, but we're, we're looking at Corinne and she just rolls in and out of frame. And you can just see Bette Midler's face on the rowing machine rolling in and out of frame on this. And you can just see Odessa trying so hard not to laugh as Bette Midler comes rolling in and out in front. It's just so great. I, it's comedy gold. I'm so sorry that we had to lose it. <laughs> was it was such a, she was such a sport. Like, get me on the rowing machine. Sure. No problem. Was the roller skating drag queen, set, was that in the book? <laughs> <laughs> that well actually that was a little different in the in the book they go into um i can't remember what kind of bar but it was it's not a roller skating bar but a different bar and they don't realize that it's a gay bar mm -hmm. and so they keep like not having any luck when they're hitting on guys and then they realize it's a gay bar to me i felt like that might have flown in 2013 when this all happened 
in 2023, I don't think you stumble into a gay bar. And if you do, I don't think you are particularly disappointed. Uh, you know, that's just how Los Angeles and, and young people are. So we kind of reworked it so that they knew they, we wanted to re represent the gay scene here, but we also didn't want it to necessarily be like, oh no, we're in a gay bar. Like that just felt a little bit off, yeah. off brand for us. Yeah. And that, that drag queen who's on the roller skates is Odessa's godfather. Oh, that's yeah, cool. Sherry Vine. Yeah. Wait, Sherry Vine, I know I interviewed Sherry Vine. Oh my gosh. Really? Okay. I gotta yeah, watch it again. Everybody, Jerry. I know. I gotta watch that part again. Um, how do you promote the LGBT aspect to the show without uh, to the movie without like a spoiler? Like I was struggling with that myself. How do you how do you promote know, what? Sorry. How can we say how can we promote the the LGBT part of the story with you know it's hard to you know it's kind of a, a surprise in the movie. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think I'm not too worried about spoilers anymore. I've I've seen articles where people just like spoiler alert and vomit out the whole story, and I know people will tell their friends. So, you know, I have to just hope people either don't read too much about this movie and go see it and take it on it or just watch it because whatever they read, they want to see how it was executed and want to, you know, I, I don't know. I um, I like how you did it. I, I really do. I liked how it came you. out. That thank was you. A, yeah. Um, what would you like people to take away from this movie? I think people, you know, I, I think right now the world is um, a tough place for a lot of people to navigate, whether it's COVID stuff, the trauma from the pandemic, climate crisis, political crises. Like, I think the world feels quite scary to a lot of people. And so what I hope this movie brings is a sense of like, oh, we can do tough things. We can find joy in the apocalypse, you know? We can go through what feels like bottomless um, challenges and still like find love and find friendship and find joy and find our way. So I, I think, you know, I, I, I just hope people fall in love with life a little bit, no matter what it throws at you. Yeah. Well, it gave me ideas. I like want to bring cakes everywhere or something. You know, I want to bring something to the bars to get over my own anxiety. So. Well, it does work. I will say we had PAs on the set who would take the leftover cakes because sometimes we would have like eight of the same cake for the day and we didn't need all of them. They would take the leftover cakes and go cake barring with them. And they were like 100 percent of the time. You will get the room chanting cake, cake, cake. You will get phone numbers if you want them. You like you will get attention if you bring bars to cakes. It is absolutely tried and true. You are so awesome. What what's um an upcoming? Do you have upcoming projects? I'm writing a horror movie. Um, I don't know if anybody will ever let me make it, but I'm writing it and um I'm reading scripts and I'm um I don't know, taking care of my flock of chickens and watering my plants. <laughs> <laughs> um how was choreographing with Rufus I you know I've interviewed him a bunch of times too I love that guy I love him too it's really fun because you know he's so creative and so weird in the best way um and he's fearless he'll just try anything you're like and then we'll do this Jesus-y thing and he's like yes <laughs> so I just I love him <laughs> he's great <laughs> yeah it's been a lot of years since I've seen him but I love him mm. did you ever think Ben Platt would be this big star like how he is I mean, I don't know Ben Platt because my Pitch Perfect movie, he was on Broadway uh, when we shot my movie. So I didn't get to work with him. And mm -hmm. I'm an enormous fan. And I'm not surprised that he's a huge star because he, he was clearly so talented and so awesome. Um, but, you know, I didn't I don't know him. So I, I don't know. Okay. Well, I hope you come to Chicago sometime. You seem like a joy to be around. And um, I'm like, glad I got this interview. So. Thank Thanks, you. Jerry. Me too. I appreciate it. Have a really good weekend. Hey, you too. All right. Bye. Bye.